All right, it's 7 o'clock. If we could go to the public hearing that we have scheduled for 7 p.m. Ms. Connolly, you're ready to go? I am. Thank you, Worship. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I now declare this formal public hearing to order. It is 7.02 p.m. Uh, it, it is the official community plan amendment application number CP100164, bylaw number 9156, and rezoning amendment application number RZ100678, bylaw number 9157. And over to you, Ms. Connolly. Thank you, Your Worship. So for this formal public hearing, uh, there are quite a few documents for Council's consideration. Uh, the first and most recent is a staff report dated May 6th from the Acting Deputy City Manager titled Consultation for Official Community Plan Amendment Application, number CP100164, Amendment Bylaw number 19156. There are four attachments to that report, uh, which include 52 items of correspondence that were received during the OCP consultation period, 43 letters in opposition and nine in support. Uh, correspondence dated April 9th, 2021 from Leah Lampert in opposition to the application. Correspondence dated April 6th, 2021 from Vicki Brown in opposition to the application. Correspondence dated April 26th, 2021 from Kevin Price, who is managing partner with Hub Collection Limited, applicant in support of the application. Correspondence dated May 19th, 2021 from Mary Applegate in opposition to the application. Correspondence dated May 7th, 2021 from Tom Filipovic, in support of the application. Correspondence dated May 7th, uh, 2021 from Ricky Parmar in support of the application. We received an executive summary uh, May 20th from Kevin Price, managing partner with Hub Collection. We received an online change.org petition that included 44 names in support of the application. Correspondence dated May 24th from Mark and Julie Shrimpton in opposition to the application. And then previously submitted staff report that was dated February 18th, uh, 2021 from the Acting Deputy City Manager that Council had originally considered at the March 8th uh, regular meeting. In addition, uh, Council would have received three items of correspondence this evening as handouts uh, that were uh, received just this week. Uh, correspondence dated May 30th from Richard Huff in opposition to the applications. Correspondence dated May 31st from Joseph Balfour in opposition to the application. And correspondence dated May 31st from Jana Corum in opposition to the application. Mr. Wells is available to provide an overview. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Thank you, Your Worship. The purpose of this report is to provide Council with the comments received through the public consultation process for the official community plan amendment application number CP100164. This application will facilitate a one apartment complex with 256 units for student housing on the subject property. This application involves the redesignation of 4500 Aspica Boulevard from neighborhood residential to neighborhood center corridor on B6, future land use of the OCP. Your Worship, through the official community plan consultation process, there was, uh, as Ms. Connolly outlined, there was letters received for and against. The concerns regarding the redesignation were as follows. Traffic impacts from the development, form and character of the existing neighbourhood, increased density, traffic capacity, pedestrian safety, topographic slopes, loss of green space, loss of wildlife cor corridor, housing assessment, market, sorry, housing assessment, not in the right location, decrease in property value. The comments in favor, your worship or accommodate, accommodation provides options for potential students in this community, good location, add value in the area, job creation, and boost local economy. Your Worship, as we go into the process, the applicant would like to rezone, uh, to, like to construct a one, one apartment with 256 unit apartments at 4500 Speaker Boulevard. In order to facilitate the application, the applicant has applied to amend the OCP and to rezone the subject property from RM1, multiple residential, to RM5, multiple residential. The, pro the property is city owned, Your Worship, and the sale is contingent on the rezoning, similar to numerous other properties that the city's rezoned and sold previously. Your Worship, the $500,000 purchase price is market value based on the topography of the site. Administration sorts, supports the application for the following reasons. 
location close to UNBC, neighborhood shopping amenities, policy 8.331 of the uh, OCP, transit route, arterial road network, pedestrian connectivity, growth management in the OCP, consistent infill development of an existing underdeveloped site. Conditions on the rezone for final reading, Your Worship, or our geotechno report required for the building permit, a no build required until the city is satisfied for the location of the building. And a traffic study was submitted, Your Worship, by a professional traffic engineer reviewed by the city's engineers and divisions and the Ministry of Highway. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Any questions of uh, Mr. Wells? Uh, Councilor I have a, a couple quick ones, Your yeah. Worship. Councilor Skaken. Well, thank you, if I may, Your Worship. Um, just a couple questions to administration. So with the current zoning, uh, what would be allowed to be built on that site now to Mr. Wells? Your Worship, uh, about 36 units per hectare on that site, uh, 30, or 22 units per hectare on that site, Your Worship. And what about the height? The height would be, Your Worship, it would be... Uh, Probably a, a two-story, two to three-story, Your Worship. Okay, and uh, the geotech report, is that something that uh, Council will have access to or, or the local residents, or what's the process on that, Your Worship? I know fourth reading is going to be withheld, but uh, um, just just a, a high level, what the geotech report, um, uh, its author, yeah. Yep, just your Worship, that, if I the geotechnical report identified the area where... Uh, there is no issues with slope stability or, or grades greater than 20%. So that area has been identified. The city wants to ensure through the building permit process that that location is protected, that no other construction can occur except for when, within that area. Okay, and the last thing, should I ask the developer this, Your Worship, about access and egress? So I guess they'll have a, a better idea on that. Yeah, that's right, Councillor Skate. That's correct. Be better. Yeah. Okay, thanks to admin. I'll, uh, I'll wait till I hear some more. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor McConaughey. Thank you very much, Mayor Hall. Um, one of the greatest concerns, uh, I, as you mentioned, Mr. Wells, was traffic impact during development. Do you have any comments on, on, on that um, during the development process, um, stipulated times of day and, and, and those types of things for the enjoyment of the residents that currently live there? Construction times, I believe it's 7 o'clock, so I can't remember the latest hour, but it's, it's basically what we have throughout the city now in residential areas where construction is occurring, such as uh, North to Chaco Road and University Heights, things like that, and other apartment projects in the area. I think it's like 7 until 7 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Wells. So, okay. And um, what, what approximately is the length of the, of the construction time? Is there any knowledge on that? Your Worship, that may be best to ask the applicant that. Ask the applicant? Okay. Thank you. I'll do that. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Um, thank you, Worship. And I'm not sure if this is to Mr. Wells or the applicant, but I'm wondering in the construction process, will any of the residential roads be impacted? as in closures? Your Worship, depending where the site services are coming in, I'm not sure if there's a dig required on the speaker where those connections come in, but usually as you're servicing a, a site, it's either through a city road, so there is disruption as you could recently that was seen on a speaker boulevard uh, for the, the regional district project where they had to, uh, traffic gets through, but you have to go around. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship. A lot of my questions have already been asked. Um, just one through to Mr. Wells. Um, regarding um, the density increase, um, will that trigger any, um, uh, the Aspica to Marlow extension or any, any um, road? Um... Your Worship. Your Worship, this project wouldn't trigger that. It, it's a desire to have that connection. Uh, it's a very pricey project that a, a Aspica connection, it would go underneath the highway. I believe it's at least 10 years old now, if not 15 years old. And I think the original price on that was about 15 to $20 million back then. So I'd assume it's probably doubled or tripled since that time. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Frizzell. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hall. On, on servicing, there's capacity for the water and sewer? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Ms. Connolly, I have nobody in the queue. Is the applicant uh, with us this evening to make a presentation or just available for questions? Yes, Your Worship. The applicant, Ashley DeGray Osborne, uh, representative of the Hub Collection Limited, is going to make a PowerPoint presentation and is on the telephone. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, good evening. Good evening, Your Worship, councillors. Uh, can you hear me all all right? We can. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to... Uh, let us come forward and, and talk about our exciting uh, project here. Um, we've been working on this now for two years to get to this point, and we're excited to be given this uh, not ideal opportunity to give the presentation for what we, we plan to do and, and why we think it's going to be a, a great benefit to, to the community and the local economy. Um, it's first worth noting that actually one of the... Uh, Co-founders is actually Dr. Naz Palmer, who uh, has been uh, was born in Prince George and is an alumni of UNBC. Um, she managed to to get a full ride scholarship and uh, went on to be a, one of the board of uh, governors at UNBC and was able to graduate in three years and go to UN, uh, UBC Medical School. And her big motivation and why we came to Prince George was she really wants to give back to the, the uh, academic institutions and to help encourage other young um, uh, budding professionals to get ahead in life. Um, you know, she is a, an immigrant. Uh, her parents moved over in the 60s and worked in the local pulp mill. So that's the sort of the, the local connection to why we came up to Prince George. Um, we, looking at the, uh, the economic benefits, um, academic uh, institutions are a huge uh, money generator for different cities. One just has to look at numerous different college cities throughout North America. They have a, a huge economic impact, both directly and indirectly, to the local economy. Uh, for example, um, during the construction of this uh, property, which will take, uh, you know, we look to, to start hopefully in the summer this year and, and finish in the summer of 2023. We look to uh, have 3,200 person months of employment will be required to construct this property. We will be utilizing a substantial amount of the local uh, construction workforce and other local trades, businesses, and vendors, which will have a huge uh, immediate impact on the local economy for employment and spin-off money generation. Once completed, uh, we will look to uh, employ multiple full-time employees, both directly and indirectly, and many part-time employees who will be in charge of operating the facility, maintaining the facility, doing uh, administration, and all the other business functions that will be required. That will also translate into considerable indirect employment as well. Um, we also see that there will be substantial uh, money generated from development fees, uh, property taxes, and obviously the sale of the land. Um, and we also are very keen to consolidate and elevate Prince George as one of the premier places to study secondary post-secondary education and we feel that that uh, that that is one big long-term advantage to your local economy when we designed the building the the site has challenges and um, there's quite a large gradient change um, so we have spent a considerable amount of money doing um, third-party uh, studies. So, for example, we've had multiple site surveys. We've had an environmental study done. We've had a full geotechnical study that was vetted again by a third-party geotechnical uh, company to, to uh, alleviate any fears that planning had. We conducted a fire hazard assessment study, a traffic study, and also a parking study. Now, when we've gone and positioned um, the uh, project. If we can go to uh, slide three, please. Please let me know if it's up because I can't see. <laughs> Sorry, could you describe what's on slide three? 
uh, it says project highlights. That's ready for you. Lovely. Thank you very much. So when we've tried to position this building, we have tried to put it in an area that is the, uh, obviously the safest place to, to build, but also where you literally will find it very hard to actually see the building, given the topography of the site. If you was, uh, just skip to um, slide five, where, uh, uh, sorry, slide four, which gives the uh, orientation of the building on the site. The next slide. The number four? Yes. If you look closely, you'll see that we've built the, uh, we're proposing putting the building at the top of the hill. If you look to the northeast where the residential buildings are, you will see that we are not in direct view line of any nearby residential houses. Um, and there will be no windows looking out towards the residential houses. Conversely, if you go down to the southeast, into the corner there, you'll see the orientation of the houses there. Again, we are not directly in the view lines. We have also chosen to uh, keep most of the site in its present form and retain considerable amounts of the site for green space. We've uh, increased the setbacks from the property line to over 72 feet. And to put that in perspective, that's 735% more than the current RM1 zoning allows. So we're trying to move the building as far away as we can from any nearby residents. As I mentioned, we are only going to be using approximately 35% of the total site area is going to be built on. This will um, make it so we can leave nearly approximately 160,000 square feet of natural undisturbed forest and green space. And we will also be offering um, a, a no-build covenant uh, covering most of that area. In addition to this, we will also be maintaining the runoff creek, to, uh, which is at the corner of Tyner and Aspeka, and we will be placing the building 85 feet away from that, that uh, water course. We will also be doing extensive uh, replanting uh, to, to replace actually more trees than we, we've calculated will be removed. In addition to this, we will also be doing an extensive forest fire prevention cleanup of the site as it is earmarked as a high risk site for uh, forest fires. It is also worth noting that uh, contrary to some of the objections that were received, this is not, in fact, an old-growth forest. It is a second-growth forest, and much of the current vegetation on the site is um, a fire risk. We also are proposing a net carbon zero facility, which is going to be uh, a country leader for student accommodation. We will be um, using um, photovoltaic um, uh, um, so, solar, yeah, solar panels on the roof, uh, heat recovery, and various other green initiatives. As um, the Director of Planning uh, highlighted earlier on, the traffic impact has been studied extensively from a third-party uh, professional uh, traffic engineering company. We were put through um, a rigorous test where we were actually uh, studied at 100% car ownership and under the most extreme circumstances at the different time frames. We, there were, I think there was four or five junctions in the immediate area that were studied, and not one of them came back with any concerns about traffic flow at any time of day. It is also worth mentioning that this is a student accommodation building, which, as a result, you don't have 100% of people going to work or going to college at the same time. They're spread out during the day. It is also worth... Uh, pointing out that there are two more bus stops that are already proposed on um, a speaker, and there is sufficient bus stops within that local uh, area that you can walk to that take you both to CNC and UNBC. Uh, we have uh, we are trying to make that effort as 
the demographics have changed now with their desire for transportation, more and more people are actually referring, preferring to use buses. And you can see this by the increase in uh, ridership actually in Prince George. Uh, in addition to that, for peace of mind for our, our guests, we also offer 24-hour on-site security and management. So that allows us to keep an eye on any um, any concerns any residents have about noise or anything like that. Um, and then I draw your attention to slide five, which is the proposed no-build area, where you will, you will see exactly how much of the, the site we will not be touching, which is predominantly because we don't want to, but also because the uh, there is a drainage. Um, it's, it's for drainage, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to go in there. We have no intention of clear-cutting the site. <clears throat> we have no intention of infilling that, that uh, no-build zone. And then, if you wouldn't mind, please go into the final slide. Um, I think it's very important to, to get some context of the fact that you won't really see our building at all from a speaker uh, or Sullivan Crescent. Um, what we did was we, we superimposed the structure on to the most recent Google images we have for the vegetation. You'll see in 2018 on a speaker, the building will be screened by the current growth that is on there. Plus, there will be substantial more underplanting and planting going on. And then if you refer to the bottom picture, there's the view from Sullivan Crescent. What is worth pointing out here is that that picture of the vegetation was taken 12 years ago. So we're pretty confident the fact you couldn't see it 12 years ago, given the growth of trees, you, you'll definitely not be able to see it now at 2021. So your, your aunt worship and councillors, we've spent a lot of time trying to plan a building that will really add uh, a lot to your local economy. We've tried to build a building that will look very aesthetically pleasing. It's an interesting design, and it's one that melds in very well with the local um, uh, trees and vegetation. So there will be no sort of, as I call it, the Soviet area uh, apartment block thing monstrosity looking at you when you when you come into the city from that side. Um, so we would, uh, that's the end of our presentation. Uh, we can go into uh, m more questions. I, we don't want to bore you to death because obviously you have a lot to get through tonight. Uh, but we would like to reserve the right to, to rebut any comments if we could going forward this evening. Okay, thank you very much. I do have some uh, councillors in the queue. I'll go to Councillor Skaken and then Councillor McConaughey. Uh, Councillor Skaken. I'll go to Councillor McConaughey. Thank you very much, Mayor Hall. Um, I think the presenter may have gone over it. I'm just looking for the um, uh, total time for the construction period, if I may, please. Um, thank you, Councillor McConaughey. Um, it's, it's split a bit. Um, as we all know that the, the winters up there are a little harsh. Um, we we're looking to um, clear, you know, assuming we can get through and finalize the plan, we would look to uh, clear the area that we're going to be building on and start to do the foundations um, uh, towards the, the summer and the latter part of this year. We would then stop, obviously, during the winter months and then start as soon as spring, spring, um, the, the spring thaw is over. And then uh, we'd be uh, continuing the work as, as fast as we can to get the building sealed in and then moving internally. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, we are aiming to assuming, and this is the big one, assuming everything is on time, we, we are hoping to complete the structure around about, say, uh, beginning of July 2023. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Councillor Skaken. Well, thank you, Worship. Just the question regarding the access in and out. My understanding originally there was only going to be a, a right out on a speaker. Are you going to have access and I guess uh, egress on uh, Tyner as well, Your Worship, to the presenter? Uh, thank you, Councillor Skaken. Um, we did look at that, but there's um, 
three different things. Um, we're proposing a slip road on a speaker. So basically you'll come in and then you'll be able to slow down so you won't be interrupting the flow of the traffic on a speaker to come into our property. We then have a second exit point um, about, um, I'm going to guess this, so just don't, don't take this as gospel, but about 120, 150 feet away. But yes, they will be turning again right onto a speaker. The, the, with your specific question, Councillor, to, to Tyna, the problem we have is that there is a ginormous gradient problem between the top of the, map, uh, of the site where we're building and the bottom of the site. I think we're looking at, uh, from memory, I think we're looking at about 12 to 15 metres. This is uh, very cost prohibitive, uh, and it also uh, presents some... Uh, some geotechnical challenges. We also looked at the, the, the traffic report and the traffic study that we did for all the major intersections um, within that vicinity, and we found that even under a, a completely worst-case scenario, we would have very minimal uh, effect on the daily traffic counts. Um, okay, you have to remember okay. if this... Oh, sorry. Does that answer your no, question, no, Councillor? Yeah, it does. It does. But now my, my question is, when they want to go to UNBC and the only way to get out of their um, building is on to a uh, speaker, my understanding is it's going to add about another 1.5 kilometers to the route. Now, are they going to have to go down a speaker and then uh, through the subdivision there uh, via Davis and that? Uh, no, I think I think it's Baker they'll be going through. So they're going to end up going through that subdivision uh, just to get back onto Tyner to go to UNBC. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, that's all for now, Your Worship. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I don't have anybody else in the queue. I'll, I've got a couple of questions, and <clears throat> I should have asked you, Mr. Wells, but the uh, presenter talked about a creek runoff as well as a geotech review, and is that uh, fourth reading is will be on hold until we get that information back on the geotech study? And, and then I'm wondering about the creek runoff that was mentioned by the presenter, if we've done work there. Your Worship, it's similar to the area of University Heights in Park Ridge, the Park Ridge uh, subdivision, uh, Parkland subdivision up in that area. There is creeks running through that area. They, we use them for drain, like they become drainage facilities for us. So, so, be. so can I just confirm that fourth reading will be held off until the geotech review is completed? I'm just reading that right now, Your Worship. Your Worship, I may can be I, able can to... I, can, I inter can I interject here, Your Worship? Sure. Yeah. Um, we we've already had uh, an extensive geotechnical report uh, study done on the site. Uh, at planning's request, they um, assigned it to a third-party geotechnical engineer to, to either dispute or validate our findings, which they validated. Um, there's the, uh, obviously there's just some slight specifics. They set out different guidelines that we should follow, which we have to follow. So um, as far as everyone is concerned, and, and if, if we still need to do some work to, to alleviate that fear, the site is uh, possible to uh, hold or, 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 or accommodate a building of this size and scale, given where we are building it. Okay, thank you. Your Worship, it's registration of a restrictive covenant, a no-build covenant, to make sure the geotechnical issues are finalized. That's fourth, fourth reading. That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can you just uh, tell me about the buffer? Uh, so if I take a look at slide four or five, um, and it backs on to homes off of, uh, well, in the subdivision, Sullivan, I think it was. That tree buffer will still be there, and I think you mentioned a 72-foot buffer. Um, yeah, so, so no, what, just, to, just to clarify that, the, the building setback, so the edge of the building will be 72 feet away for the edge of the property, right? Yeah. Given the current RM1 zoning, we are technically allowed to go only uh, three meters away. So we are increasing that distance um, because we're trying to be considerate to the neighborhood by 735%. Uh, um, we are going to be uh, retaining um, 
for the buffer, um, we're going to retain four and a half metres of the current mixed tree growth around the property border, uh, which is approximately uh, 12 metres high. And then in between uh, the lower grades, we will be replanting to create a natural infill because a lot of the, the canopy at the moment has not allowed um, the smaller plants and shrubs to grow. So we're, we're, in, we're giving nearly a 20-foot buffer. Okay, thank you. And it will remain. And the number of units again, please? It is 254. Good, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Sampson. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, I just want to confirm, so in, in the presentation, I believe it was slide three, uh, it indicates, uh, you've indicated that uh, there will be a uh, no-build covenant for the runoff creek uh, for the 85 feet away. And then you indicate that you guys are, are planning on not exceeding 35% of the total site area. And of course, the 72 feet, which you just referenced, uh, setback. But uh, I'm just wondering uh, what kind of, um, and it might be through to staff, what kind of guarantees do we have on commitments like that? So if there's a no-build covenant with the creek, I, I, I understand that. But what kind of guarantees do we have on the 35% site coverage or the 72 uh, feet setback? Your Worship, that's why we're waiting for the geotech-led building permit to come in to finalize that and put on, on no-build covenants in those areas. On, on the 35% as well? Not the 35%, but that steep sloped area that's there that we don't want to be touching and where the drainage channel is. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so that'll come back at 4th, okay? And the traffic to UMBC that uh, was referenced is a bit of a concern uh, when I look at this. and that we're gonna be forcing traffic down us Spica only to, I, I imagine drivers are going to be uh, wanting to pull a U-turn at the Davis-Baker turn around there just to go up to UMBC because it will save significant time. And we've already experienced uh, traffic issues at that crosswalk there where we've recently installed the additional um, flashing light for pedestrian crossing there. And I guess my only concern is just uh, uh, pedestrian safety on, on that thoroughfare. It's not necessarily the traffic increase, it's the traffic, uh, the, what they may do to try to shave off a couple minutes to get to the school by pulling those U-turns. And I know that's not necessarily uh, for use on this property, but it's impacted by the use of this property and only having that turn off. So I guess I'm wondering, um, Will, uh, uh, will, you set, uh, will there be a second consideration for a right-hand turnoff onto Tyner to expedite the traffic who wants to go to UMBC rather than the traffic who wants to go to CNC? Because it would mitigate that issue of forcing the UMBC folks down on Spico, which is the wrong direction for their school. Um, yes, Councillor Sampson, we, uh, we have looked at a potential location for a driveway would then feed the traffic into Tyner. Uh, I think it's also quite important to point out that uh, to this point this evening, everyone is assuming that all the students will be going to UNBC. Uh, we've taken the stance that, that you know it could be 50-50 going to CNC, given the fact that CNC actually has less student accommodation than uh, UNBC does. Um, but yes, we have looked at one possible location uh, we're in the midst of trying to figure out the costing of doing that. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. It's not that I necessarily think um, the majority is going to go be, go to UMBC. It just takes, you know, s some people making bad moves, and we're only encouraging encouraging uh, those traffic behaviors by by not offering uh, convenient convenient access to potentially fifty percent of the residents at this at this uh, facility. So it's not that I. Uh, don't appre I, I actually appreciate your, your presentation quite a bit. I'm just concerned on that because we have had uh, pedestrian traffic safety issues literally at the, at the intersection where we're describing where these folks are going to go to turn around or maybe potentially be pulling U-turns or something else to shave off their time. So it's just a, a safety issue that I'm more concerned about. I'd be really interested in, in, uh, in hearing that uh, <coughs> the investment would be made to uh, blow through uh, just a, a single lane, uh, maybe not even an entrance point uh, off of Tyner, but just an exit point uh, onto Tyner, a right-hand turn. And I, I, rec I respect that it's an expensive endeavor, but when it comes to uh, pedestrian safety, I, I think that's 
of paramount importance for the community, for the folks around there, right? Including the residents who uh, are going to be walking to bus stops just down the road. Uh, Councilor Sampson, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And as I said, you know, you have the, 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 the benefit of being there in the community. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we haven't been able to come up there for the last 15, 16 months. Mm -hmm. But we have heard the concern. We are looking at that option. Um, we are just, uh, like I said, uh, the figuring out exactly where it is going to go. And we are more than happy to uh, talk to you and, and counsel about our findings, about where we, we see a viable option for safety, because at the end of the day, you're quite right, people's safety should be paramount to everybody's uh, thoughts. I really appreciate that, and I, I, I appreciate that you haven't necessarily had the opportunities to come up because of COVID, so thank you very much. And lastly, just through to staff, is there, um, uh, what kind of um, options do we have with respect to uh, asking for that kind of uh, access, or what kind of options do we have for uh, development cost charges to upgrade any intersections around there? What, what, what does that look like? What kind of options does council have in this case? Your Worship, we're, we are looking at, uh, in that area, there is traffic uh, concerns not uh, related to this project, but uh, as you go up uh, Speaker Boulevard, uh, sorry, Tyner Boulevard towards the university, there's pressure points for left turn slots, things like that, that can help alleviate traffic in that area. Those are triggered at uh, density levels of development in that area, but those are going to have to be looked at uh, very shortly as, uh, as uh, Parkview is developed and... Uh, University Heights continue to be developed and future access to the property adjacent uh, to this across the Speaker Boulevard. There'll be re future residential in that area, which was always planned. So there will be an access into that off of Speaker. Great. Thanks very much. I, uh, no further questions. Just wanted to stress my, uh, my concern about the, the traffic safety, but um, I'll jump back in if I have any more. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Frizzell. <coughs> Thanks. My question's got it addressed. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Skaken, followed by Councillor Ramsey. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Just a reminder to us in Council about um, sharing our comments and, and, and that prior to the close of the public hearing. I'm just wonder if you can just refresh uh, some of those guidelines for us, Your Worship. Ms. Connolly. Your Worship, through to Councillor Skagan, so once the public hearing is closed, Council's not able to receive any further submissions from the public. So this uh, public hearing is the opportunity for members of the public to provide written submissions as well as uh, be on our conference call line that we have open. Um, so outside of closing the public hearing, that does um, close the public input opportunity. Does that oh, no, sorry, 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 Your Worship, it was just about, um, and I know Mr. Babich has given us guidance before about sharing our, our comments or concerns as a counselor and that we can't do it until the public hearing is closed, uh, public hearing portion is closed to keep us on track and to not influence anything prior to that vote. That's all. Mr. Babich, did you want to comment on that? Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. Um, so there's an obligation for council to keep an open mind during the public hearing and uh, it's recommended not to indicate whether a member is supportive or not supportive of the application until such time as the public hearing has been closed as explained by Ms. Connolly. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. General, general guidance, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Councillor Ramsey. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I just had a question. Um, Councillor Sampson had been asking some questions about uh, whether the applicant intended to add uh, that left hand, right hand turn on the tyner. Uh, I guess my question is, um, would uh, would consideration be given to opening the boulevard on Aspica to just allow for a left-hand turn? It seems like that would perhaps be the less costly Your Worship, option. That, to do that, it's a significant uh, boulevard there that would... Uh, entail like basically allowing U-turns to occur? Is that what you're thinking about as you go forward? You do a, a complete, you get into that left turn slot and do a I turn around? We, I don't think that's been... I don't know if you can look at where the second driveway is on the bottom of the property where it says 7.9 meters. Could you oh, not I, allow I it to saying. turn left yep. there instead of just right? Yep. Your Worship, I think the traffic impact study wasn't looking at that just because the speeds that people travel up and down a speaker boulevard right 
you're correct, that would be a consideration. Okay, thank you. That, that was really my question for clarification. Um, uh, I guess if the traffic impact study's already been complete, there's no way to get that information then? Your worship, I don't think they, they looked at this. When they looked at the numbers based on, I think it's 60% of the vehicles that will be, they expect 60% of the, uh, the space to have cars, the units, the breaking of the time periods and things like that, they don't anticipate a huge traffic volume from this development. I know that uh, other uh, projects where they don't expect big vehicle uh, ownership, they decrease the the uh, the requirements for the traffic study and on-site parking. And, and there will be a bus stop near the the, the development. That's as correct. Well. Two of them, Your Worship. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sampson. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, just uh, my, to clarify my comment uh, and, and to Councillor Ramsey's comment, I, uh, I, I travel, I speak every day, and it's a very busy uh, road. So I, I w my, my interest is uh, specifically a right-hand turn off onto, uh, or merge, but a right-hand turn off onto Tyner for, uh, uh, I'm no, definitely no traffic uh, expert, but uh, I, I, my concern is around the congestion on Ospeka, and so my interest is a right-hand turn onto Tyner in order to uh, mitigate those traffic concerns, but uh, that's all. Thanks, hey, Thank you. I have one final question, and then I'll go to uh, folks that are wanting to uh, provide comment. Uh, can you go back to the map, Ms. Kellett? Um, so <clears throat> right now, uh, I'm interested in whether or not we're going to make transit exceptions in there, uh, because if a number of those uh, students who are occupying those facilities don't have uh, vehicles. So the closest transit stop is of interest to me. And as we see it right now, access in and out of this particular location is only on the, uh, only on Aspica, going in the, what is that? Uh, that's on the, on the south, south direction, right? No. Um, can you clarify that for me, Mr. Wells? Can you repeat that, Your Worship? Yeah, I'm looking for access into this into this facility. I I only see it on the northbound lane of Ospica, correct? That's correct. So in order to access it, you've got to come up Ospica to Tyner and maneuver around to get in or down to Baker and then maneuver around to come back up. Well, that correct. wouldn't work either. That's correct. Okay, thank you. And transit, can anybody answer that for me? Is it the stop that's uh, directly on, is that on Davis? Your worship. No, it's not. It's on Ospica and, and Baker, right? That's yeah. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Or Davis. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Ms. Connolly, anybody in the queue for comments? Thank you, Worship. So, uh, Ms. Bernard, Legislative Services staff member, is operating the telephone lines, and uh, I just uh, let members of the public know that are watching the live stream, we have posted a slide with the telephone number to call into the conference okay. line. So, I turn it over to uh, Melissa, um, who is operating the phone lines, to um, turn us over to the first caller. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? My name's Leah. Hi, Leah. Yes, we can hear, hear you just fine. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Your Worship and uh, Council. And um, I also would like to thank the Hub Collection for the uh, very detailed information that they have provided. Um, I haven't done much of this, so I'll just do my best to muddle through. First question that I, I listening to uh, council's comments and questions to uh, staff and wow. and to the hub collection, uh, I'm curious. I'm very curious about the location of where this um, right hand turn from Tyner into the site may be located, particularly in reference to the very large red area on the executive summary that that shows uh, no build covenants will be. Um, entered into there. So is there a possibility that uh, there will be that, that no build covenant, that big large red area on, is going to be disturbed at all? Or can, uh, can uh, maybe Mr. Um, maybe staff or the hub collection uh, provide more information on that? Mr. Wells or to the applicant, Mr. Wells, we'll start with you. Your worship, it, uh, the way it sits now, 
it wouldn't be disturbed, right? That's that's the plan. If there was an access to that uh, area from that, that would disturb that uh, no build area, Your Worship. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I. Yeah, I understand that, uh, Mr. Wells. I'm just wondering. I've heard uh, the things like delaying the, the fourth reading and. And I've heard the applicant say that they are looking at a potential for that. So, uh, if there is a, if there is some some consideration for a right turn onto Tyner, can would that can, I guess, can residents be assured that would not occur in the red, no build zone as presented tonight? Uh, Your Worship, can I maybe yeah. help on to? Um, hi there. Um, we understand your concerns. Um, the uh, as um, a lot of people may who, who haven't been on this site uh, probably not aware. It, it does have quite substantial topographical issues here. Um, as a as a brand and as a company, we are trying to be environmentally conscious. We're trying to not disturb as, uh, as uh, any of the site that we really don't need to. Um, initially, given the uh, the scope of our traffic study, it was indicated that there would be no significant uh, effects on the traffic uh, in junctions. So we didn't we didn't actually do uh, a study for uh, a, a secondary exit point on Tyna um, because there was no objection from the city transportation or the Ministry of Transportation. Um, as a consequence of recent developments, we have started to look at uh, what Councillor Sampson was, was mentioning, maybe putting a, a right turn onto Tyner. We would endeavour to try and put one at the most narrow point that would have the most minimal impact on any part of that no-build covenant. Obviously, then it won't. we will have to disturb it, but it would be our aim that... Uh, we would have that all finalized before fourth reading. So no guarantees then that that um, runoff creek and, and that very sensitive riparian area would not be disturbed at this point? Well, we, we have offered that no build uh, covenant. We That is how we're trying to show good faith that we have uh, no real uh, interest in disturbing that area. It's now given these new developments about the concerns about the traffic that we're trying to come up with the, the uh, best solution that will have as minimal impact on that uh, area. It is worth noting that this is a runoff for the spring melt. There is no fish or anything in it, and it is predominantly young growth trees with no significant uh, uh, exceptional wildlife in, in that particular culvert is what it really is. Well, um, Ms. yeah, I will just say that the city website themselves designate this as a sensitive riparian and wetland area, and as such has, as I have detailed for Council and uh, your uh, availability, that this um, these areas can and should be protected, and in fact, uh, uh, as per the OCP section 11.25, before the city disposes of any sensitive riparian or wetland areas, they must make no build co covenants or pr pr make steps to preserve those areas. So I would uh, just uh, just leave that on the record. And um, with respect to the one other question or discussion around routing tra traffic in and around uh, through Baker, um, I, I would just add that... Um, that's a very narrow <laughs> local street, and it is very steep. It's steep up and steep down and runs right past the uh, uh, playground to get to Tyner onto Baker. So I'll just make those notes as well. Um, really, though, um, on behalf of residents in the neighborhood, I, I, I thank the, um, the Hub Collection uh, for their very sensitive and um, good faith in, in trying to address concerns. I, I do, if unless I misunderstood your worship, this is in um, not a uh, referendum per se on whether this is a nice building or residents will be, uh, in fact, um, uh, treated with 
sensitivity, but it is about uh, amending the OCP specifically from a neighborhood residential designation into into a neighborhood center corridor designation. Is it, am I misunderstood, Your Worship? No, it's you're, you're correct. It's around land use. Mr. Right. Walls, do you want so to comment? Then, Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, uh, it's hard to um, hear and to understand what's going on in the room at the same time. Um, if it if this is around land use, then then I think that some discussion about what a neighborhood center corridor is, and what there are what other alternatives would be um, that are 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 reasonable to suggest here in this. And and I might say that um, the first question I have is a neighborhood center corridor designation exists within a neighborhood center. The obvious question is that there is no neighborhood center around there. Can someone provide an explanation of how, how this could be? Mr. Wells. Your Worship, uh, from the planner's point of view, the designation allows for mixed-use developments with the emphasis on adding residential uses with daily needs and amenities with an easy walking distance uh, as based on objective 8.3. 311 of the OCP. So the, the subject property is within close proximity to commercial centers and nodes with Save On Foods, Walmart, Canadian Tire, and it's a, uh, existing uh, pedestrian routes along uh, Tyner Boulevard and BC Transit routes and cycling routes, Your Worship. So we see this as being a, uh, a neighborhood center tied into those uses being close by. Not right on the site, but within the very close proximity. So, Mr. Wells, if I understand you correctly, you see this as a neighborhood center despite the fact that it is not designated as such. That's the process to amend it through the OCP process. Right. And the other question I have, and maybe it's just semantic, is a neighborhood center corridor is a subsection of a neighborhood center. And uh, they don't exist outside of, currently they don't exist outside of neighborhood centers. So how then could this come about? Mr. Wells? Like I indicated before, you outside of the neighborhood center corridor. Tied to that is the other features that, that make it part of a neighborhood center. Okay, make it part of a neighborhood center, but not designated. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Um, can council or staff point to any precedent? I, I, I note uh, in that the Local Government Act requires council to consider OCP changes quite carefully and be consistent. Can council or staff present, to, present any precedent that would suggest that we could have this lone piece of neighborhood corridor outside of a neighborhood center and unconnected to any other corridor areas? So your worship, the OCP policy creates, uh, encourages infill redevelopment of existing vacant and underutilized site with the emphasis on enhancing uh, pedestrian ex experience policy 83.31. Uh, your worship uh, also uh, The, uh, basically, it's uh, Aspeak and Tyner Boulevard are designated as arterial roads, which are meant to move large volumes of traffic. Any development should be have op be subject to traffic analysis policy of the OCP, right? Uh, the de yes. designation speaks to may. building design site uh, development buffering neighborhood residents from noise, traffic, et cetera. So overall staff feels that the OCP amendment is appropriate, Your Worship. So no precedent set then. Um, I would also like to point out for the record that the infill designation that Mr. Wells um, refers to is, is, is very generalized. I, I mean, if you look at the growth management appendix of the OCP, this infill could apply to practically every piece of 
city-owned land that is un- or underdeveloped, this doesn't necessarily make it um, specific to this area. There's no argument there that that should that this makes this area any more special. Um, but I will move on uh, in the interest of time and knowing that others want to discuss these things. I suppose then I would like Council to, to consider for a minute that there are a lot of other alternative land use designations that, that could be um, could be applied and and certainly given some of the curiosity around how a neighborhood corridor center could exist outside of a neighborhood corridor or a neighborhood center and all these things uh, let me say uh, for the record I have and I believe presented to council in my written submissions and I will not uh, go over them again but there are very compelling arguments for considering this land to be very valuable to the city economically and environmentally and and a lot of OCP support for preserving this land in the state that it is. Nonetheless, I would turn my mind a little bit and ask court or, or council to consider with me just for a few more minutes um, that there are other, within the neighborhood umbrella, there are other designations that, that could have been suggested here, but were not. Um, if a neighborhood center is if this is supposed to be neighborhood center but is not designated as such, um, certainly this is a residential complex. So a neighborhood center corridor residential designation could have been um, suggested, but um, the the scope and the scale of this development does not. Even if this were an officially designated neighborhood center, the scale and scope of this development is far exceeds what would be allowed under a neighborhood center residential development, which I think serves to show council just how far they are being asked to go in 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 trying to fit this complex in this area. Um, there is also, I would note, of some interest that there is a neighborhood corridor designation that could have been suggested but was not. Um, and interestingly enough, the maximum limits with respect to size and density are the exact same in the neighborhood corridor res uh, designation and the neighborhood center corridor designation. Uh, the uh, exact same four-story building with up to 250 uh, units could be built in either one. And, um, you know, with respect to residents, regardless of what you call it, it's going to result in the same impacts. Um, and so it is a little bit curious to me that um, this is a neighborhood center corridor suggestion that is before council. I think that council should consider very carefully that a neighborhood center corridor designation has allows for much more bigger and much more larger and varied commercial uses than a neighborhood center or a part in neighborhood corridor could allow. A neighborhood corridor could allow some specific prescribed commercial developments, but these developments are limited to 2,000 square meters in total, and if connected, they cannot exceed 700 millimeters, or sorry, meters squared. If this were to be designated as a neighborhood center and or neighborhood center corridor, the commercial uses and the rate and the scale are, are considerably larger. They can have up to 15,000 meters squared. They should have full services, commercial, retail, and otherwise, and, and feature street frontages no more than two to three city blocks in length. Um, and I think that this, this does point to what is one of the neighborhood's primary concerns that this is in fact just the first piece in the domino, so to speak, that, that will open this area up to immense levels of development and density that are far beyond what is being proposed now and even far beyond what anyone could imagine. Um, and let me just say, Council, if you think I'm speculating, I am not the only one. The, the, the property right across the road on Aspica, there are 23 acres for sale now. They are already, as per their sign, advertising a, no, a number of commercial and retail and residential uses. And the speculation 
is that the property now under the cur- and this this property I might add is is exactly the same uh, designation and zoning. The list price, the assessed price is one point five million dollars, but is now listed for seven point eight million dollars. Council can, if council were really interested in preventing or helping the residents preserve or have at least some control over what will undoubtedly be for their development in this area. A neighborhood corridor is it, it, uh, is easily allowed to uh, this development as well. So I suggest that to council that consider very clearly that they are in fact opening the door to um, having a dramatic change on this neighborhood. Um, and I think, if I, well, I if I could if I could just interrupt for a moment, I'm very cognizant of the time. We try to provide 15 minutes per speaker, and I know that I have more people in the queue, so uh, I would just uh, give you a little bit of flexibility here, if you would, please. Yes. No. Thank you, Your Worship. I am on exactly my last point anyway. I had expected something similar. Let me just say that. Um, and I hesitate to raise this, but it has been voiced to me many, many times in the last few days. City staff are on record as being keen, very keen to have this area developed. And the fact that this very specific designation that allows for such an incredible raise in uh, the price or the, the, the speculated land value, this, this opens the city and staff and everybody involved to, to very unseemly perceptions and, and allegations. And, and I would just ask, uh, I, w- I, I would... I, if, I, if I could remind you that this is specific to the land use this evening and the comments that you're making uh, are treading a long ways away from land use. Yes, Your Honour, thank you. Or, sorry, Your Worship, thank you. I just would uh, close by asking if there is, with these perceptions out there, is there any, I mean, surely there must be policies that that prevent uh, conflict of interest and having staff recuse themselves. Is there anything that uh, staff or council may want to, to again, say? To again, I, I, I need to remind you that you are treading on, on, on an area that is not specific to land use. I will respond to your question about conflict of interest, code of conduct, uh, but your, your, your questions are not uh, having anything to do with the land use of this particular location. That's fine, Your Worship. Thank you. I'll just leave uh, the record to stand then and thank everybody for their time and attention to this matter. Thank you very much. Ms. Connolly, the next speaker, please. I turn it over to Ms. Bernard. Are there any other uh, callers on the line? Hi, Your Worship. This is Ms. Bernard. There are currently no further speakers in the queue for this application. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I did have Councillor Sampson and Councillor Ramsey in the queue. Councillor Sampson still there, or did I forget to queue you out? Okay. Um, Councillor Ramsey, question of the applicant or Mr. Wells? Uh, of Mr. Wells, um, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, the last speaker um, had identified this as a riparian area, and I, I, I don't believe that's true, so I'm just hoping Mr. Wells can respond to that, please. That's correct, Your Worship. It's not a riparian sensitive area. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else in the queue to speak to this issue for a first time? Your Worship, this is Ms. Bernard. There are currently no speakers in the queue for this application. Are there any other speakers in the queue for this application for a second time? Your Worship, there are no further speakers in the queue for this application. Thank you very much. And for a third and final time, are there any speakers in the queue for this application? Your Worship, there are no further speakers in the queue. Thank you very much, Ms. Bernard. I would ask then Council for a motion to close the public hearing, formal public Move hearing. Thank closure, you. Your Worship. Closure, Councillor Frizzell, Councillor Skaken. All those in favour of closure in the room, opposed to closure in the room, opposed to closure on Zoom. Closure has been declared and is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Council, we have... Uh, um, Couple of recommendations, if I could just, uh, recommendation for third reading. 
any questions of Mr. Wells? I have a process question, if I could, Ms. Conley or Mr. Babich, um, and maybe it's a qualifier on the support of third for me around the geotechnical, and I'm still troubled by access, quite frankly. Uh, right now, and I need clarification, access for me is one way in, one way out onto northbound Ospica. Is that accurate? That's correct, Your Worship. Yeah, so therein lies my issue, and, and I know that Councillor Sampson has talked a great deal about access off of uh, the site onto Tyner, a right lane to get up to uh, the university, and I've heard from the applicant talk about the, the struggles that there may be there, but um, uh, you know, I, I'm intrigued by the development. There's no question about it. Intrigued by the fact that it's student housing, but I, I still have an issue around uh, access and egress, so. With that, I'll go to Councillor Everett, Sampson, and Skaken. Your Worship, I'd like to finish this and then have another comment after. Sure. Yeah, I'll just skip now. No. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sampson. Thanks, Your Worship. I, um, I want, we're clear to give our opinions. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, I, um, I want to say that I, I'm actually really appreciative. It's, I think it's quite a thoughtful application. I think the uh, applicant has put a lot of thought into trying to make sure that they're, they're coming in and being good neighbors. They're leaving a, a large setback. Uh, they are uh, being mindful of the, um, of the creek and the trees and the, uh, the whole form of the neighborhood and trying to be coming into this as a, a good uh, neighbor. It's a good looking development. It's going to be bringing students into the area, which I think bringing young people into a neighborhood is actually a, a positive. Uh, they're good neighbors. Um, that's not 100% always true, but it's also not always true about any people of any age being good neighbors. So I think generally uh, it's, it's exciting to have uh, students coming into your neighborhood and being part of, uh, be, be being part of the community, especially people from uh, likely out of town, uh, moving to Prince George, uh, experiencing uh, our, our post-secondary institutions, and uh, hopefully choosing to make Prince George their home beyond their education, uh, because that's what, uh, that's what that's all about. We're trying to recruit pre people to move to our community and, and make PG home. So I, I really like the application. I love that they're, they're, they're going with the green initiatives. They're trying to be a net carbon zero facility. Uh, we heard the applicants say that they're one of the leaders in this uh, uh, type of development with student housing. That's exciting. Um, I think it's going to be a really great development if it passes. My biggest concern still is the traffic. And it's, and it's uh, simply, you know, I, I will say for the convenience of the uh, residents of this facility, going to CNC is very convenient. Coming home from CNC, not very convenient. Going to UMBC, not very convenient. But coming home, very convenient. So it's challenging me just based on that. But realistically, when I look at it, it's beyond that. It's the, the safety because I, I'm worried about people cutting corners People inherently cut corners. You go down to Davis, you think I could go through the community and get to UMBC, or I could shave off five minutes and pull a U-turn. And we already know that Ospica and that intersection specifically is quite busy. And we, we're, tr we're, we're trying to enhance uh, pedestrian safety at that intersection, not uh, put any more stress or uh, issue on there. And I, I don't believe this development's going to cause um, increased traffic to a point of fault. We've seen that in the traffic study. Uh, the roads can handle the, the amount of traffic that's gonna be coming out of here. And many of these residents will likely take uh, transit but uh, and coming at different times of the day, but it's the general public safety from the transit point of view that I'm concerned about. Uh, even if it's coming home from CNC, you know, I, I really don't wanna see anybody pulling a U-turn on the corner of Ospica and Tyner. That's uh, arguably even worse. Or pedestrians trying to walk to school, maybe cutting the corner and not walking up to the intersection and walking across four lanes of traffic on Ospica. And these are a lot of what ifs, but I think it's something we have to consider when approving these types of developments. So um, just putting it out there, open to comment. I really like the project and the development overall. I do think it fits uh, what we're trying to do in our community. I think it fits the neighborhood. I think the applicant is acting as a good neighbor in their proposal and their application. And uh, I, I'm overall really uh, excited about this um, development proposal. However, the traffic is a hurdle for me that I, I want to hear more about, and I'd love to hear from my colleagues and their comments as well. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Skaken, followed by McConaughey. Well, thank you, Worship. Um, 
prior to this, you know, I met with uh, one of the proponents of this project and, and we talked about a number of things. One of the things we talked about, and my concern specifically, was access and egress on to uh, Tyner from the site. And I believe the uh, proponent here tonight said it, uh, I don't know if the wording was cost prohibitive, but there will not be uh, access or egress going in there. And, the, you know, I'm on Google Maps or Google Earth right now, and I just did a little bit of uh, a scaling with the topography. And, and I go up there quite often. There's such a huge slope. I don't even know if they could technically uh, have access to the site, and and is it a good fit? Is it a good fit for the community and all the rest of that? You bet it is. But to uh, to have the residents of that neighborhood uh, have people take shortcuts to get in and out of there, to me defies any logic. And you know, I I, I would have been perfectly fine. They've extended the buffer. They've done a, a number of other mitigation plans, Your Worship. But to have people um, take a shortcut or do a U-turn on both the uh, Aspica and Baker, um, I think is absolutely mind-boggling, Your Worship. And uh, so at this point, I will not support the project because of that. There's other sites in the community where um, if they really want to invest in the community, I think there's other sites the city can uh, work with them on. But for this specific thing, you know, uh, sorry to the developer, um, um, I cannot support it tonight. So I'll be voting no. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councilor McConaughey. Thank you very much, Mayor Hall. Um, just as a matter of process, because I hear some of the concerns that are being expressed and um, that, that may be further expressed by other councillors. Um, is there steps, um, so where, where the traffic uh, study is concerned, I know it's already been done. Is there an opportunity to not to keep this moving forward tonight, Mr. Wells, but be able to have an opportunity to look at uh, a traffic to address the ingress, egress concerns that are being raised tonight with the developer. What, what does that look like? Or is it do or die this evening? Your Worship, and Mr. Babbage may correct me on this. If, if there's an updated traffic impact study required, I think we'd have to come back to third reading again uh, for access points. Uh, so we'd have to rescind third reading, come back again with that future traffic impact study that shows possible access and egress out if that's what council desires. Okay, thank you um, for that answer. Um, I, I'm really excited about this project. Um, I'm, I, I'm appreciative that this group has chosen the city of Prince George to, um, to develop here. Um, as far as the, um, the OCP, um, I, I think the reasoning for that is it has to be rigid enough to provide a good framework, but at the same time, it has to be flexible enough so that um, council that we can consider uh, needs as they change, as our community changes and, and grows. Um, this is perfect infill development in that it is tied to public transportation and all the utilities, uh, close to the amenities, um, of food, shopping, um, and with regards to other traffic on Tyner, that whole area is going to grow substantially. There's no doubt. It has already grown substantially. Um, but I'm mindful of the fact that it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. It, it's not very often in existing areas like this where you, um, you know, you build out the streets and, and, and everything ready there for the uh, in advance. Well, it's so far in advance of that growth that takes years um, to to um, be realized. So I think we it, it's important to realize that um, roads and, and infrastructure sidewalks increase bus, bus stops, um, reinforcing uh, current um, intersections, adding intersections, adding crosswalks. These are all um, part of the growing pains of a growing city. And they, they can't be something that... Um, roadblocks um, growth and development. It's, it's something that is uh, a side-by-side -side, um, thing that we, um, as I say, we address the OCP. Um, is it still meeting our needs? Um, oh, wait, we have an... It wasn't that long ago we didn't have a university. Um, so things change our city, and so our needs change along with it as our demographics change. 
Um, I like the, um, the, the green initiatives. Um, I think student housing is, is important. Um, the traffic study, I, I did um, attend the uh, online meeting between uh, residents and uh, representatives from LM Engineering, and it was really well done. And folks that expressed their opinions and their concerns, they did so in uh, an amazingly professional manner. Um, and part of that discussion was um, did um, was around the traffic study, and is the existing infrastructure capable of supporting this development? Now, I'm smart enough to know what I don't know, and when something is presented that's way above my pay grade, I have no reason at this time not to trust the outcome of the traffic study that was done by people who make it their reason to get out of bed every day to, um, to analyze uh, things like this. Um, I'm going to be supporting this project. It has, uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. I, I think it would be uh, short-sighted to not support this project. And um, I look forward to, uh, I, I hope it passes tonight so that we get an opportunity to see this grow. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ramsey. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, and. Um, Thanks to my colleagues for their comments so far. Um, you know, I did a lot of research on this, looking at the difference between the RM1 and the RM5 um, zonings. Um, and, and one of the things, there's a couple things for me. Um, we see the density increase from 30 dwellings a hectare to 125 dwellings a hectare. Um, the difference in uh, the site coverage is only 10% between the two zonings. Um, in fact, uh, the site density um, for the current zoning allows for 45% site coverage. Um, the RM5 allows for 55% site coverage. And we've heard from the applicant that they're only actually going to be using 35% site coverage. The site allows for 45 under its current zoning structure. Um, the maximum uh, height does increase to four stories from the 2.5, but it is only a difference of five meters. And we've seen from the visuals that it's not only not gonna be able to be seen from the road because of the, the growth in the area, it's not gonna be able to see, be seen from the residential um, subdivision on the other side as well. Uh, you know, I hear concerns about the traffic study impact. Uh, this has been approved by Modi, and it's been approved by a third party. I think, um, you know, one of the things that we should consider is who this building is designed for. It's built for students. Uh, students are not going to pay to park at the university or the college all day when they can take the bus for free because it's included in their tuition. I just, uh, we've seen in these student developments time and time again that the developers actually cry, uh, apply for the decrease in parking because they know they're not going to use all of the spaces. So while some students might drive to those facilities, I really think that the biggest impact is going to be on the transportation network. I don't necessarily um, believe that we're going to see an increase in traffic in that area. Um, I, I really think that, that the students are going to use the public transportation options because it will be the easiest thing, quite frankly. Um, I, I, I was a university student, <laughs> oh my God, like 15 years ago, and we talked about, oh my God, one day there will be student housing in Prince George and in Upper uh, College Heights and University Heights. It, it, that was almost 15, 16 years ago, and there's still no housing. In fact, we put in an apartment complex up there and then we put an age restriction on it that would only allow people 40 plus to live in that building near the university. <laughs> so uh, this is such a needed piece of housing in our uh, community. Uh, not only for me, it, 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 under the current zoning, uh, the 35% site coverage is less than what's allowed right now. Um, I, I really think that it's, 
going to be a great development in our community. It's filling a need. It's infill development. Um, it hits a lot of marks. And quite frankly, um, the, the traffic study, both of them, supports it. Um, I think, uh, you know, maybe 10, five years down the, five, 10 years down the road, if we're finding that the traffic um, flow has changed, count, future councils can look at that and make adjustments. That's within our ability and our power. Um, so I'm gonna be supporting the application. I think the developer has gone above and beyond um, in making sure that this is um, really meeting the, the demands, but also filling that uh, space in a unique way. This is about land use. They've really done a good job making sure that those, the, the no-build area is going to be untouched um, and, and that they're only going to be utilizing as much of the site as they need. So I, I, I'm going to be supporting it tonight. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Thank you, Worship. And, and I, too, uh, appreciate not only the comments of my colleagues, but uh, of all those that I've heard from this evening. I am in support of this application. I believe that uh, when when you come to um, consider where you're going to live, if the parking and the access to roads and the roads that you might want to take don't fit, you're probably going to choose another place to live. And we need this additional housing. So that's my fundamental response. But again, I have a great deal of, um, of respect for all the comments that I've heard. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Frizzell, followed by Councillor Everett. Thank you, Mayor Hall. And uh, I don't need you to indulge me. This entire presentation isn't just to make Councillor Ramsey feel good. But 25 years ago, when I was starting up at UNBC, I got a place in Lacoma Street. So it was a four and a half kilometer walk up the hill, and then a four and a half kilometer walk back down the hill. And at 40 below, uh, someone from southern BC at the time got a real good awakening to Prince George. Um, the, buying a car is the second most expensive purchase and uh, you know the distance from UNBC to this housing is, uh, is three kilometers instead of four and a half kilometers. It's on, uh, on that beautiful new walkway that the city of Prince George put together that already gets frequent travel. I think active transportation is something we've sought out for a long time, and it's a direction that we really want to trend towards and should be encouraged. But let's not forget CNC, because uh, that's also a growing, and really successful post-secondary institution with a long history in our, uh, in our community. So... Um, I want to commend the, uh, commend the design piece on this. The reason I started thinking about cars and active transportation was, uh, was the discussion around pursuing net zero. And Canada's goal is to achieve net zero by 2050. This is the kind of thing that helps us to achieve it. But more to the point, let's think about where we'll be in five or ten years as this place fills up, as, the, uh, as more, more and more students come. Right now... Uh, we may not be on track to getting 10% of our vehicles electric vehicles, but what we have seen is improved collision detection, improved steering. I've driven along University Way in a car hands-free because it was driving itself at the time, and that's okay. So that isn't where we are yet, but we are going towards at a place where vehicle traffic is probably going to be not as frequent as before. Certainly, the, if the pandemic taught all of us one thing, it's that you can take your university courses in your apartment building. You don't even have to go on campus anymore. So for all these reasons, let's highlight the fact that transportation was the number one drawback that was brought up. In fact, it was the only thing that really challenged this. And I think that those challenges, and that I agree with Councillor Ramsey, they, they're not strong enough to compel me to say no, and the rest of it is, is such a good project. I do want to say that, the, uh, that I'm always encouraged when residents put a lot of work into their submissions and present it in a methodical way with a structured argument and, uh, and are generally polite, and, uh, and we saw much of that tonight. Uh, I think uh, one thing, if we've missed one thing more than anything else, it's having the citizens of Prince George in chamber with us and I wish we could be open, and I hope it opens soon. But as it stands right now, I'm going to be supporting this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor Everett. 
Well, thank you, Your Worship. I hope uh, Councillor McConaughey was listening to my younger friends tell us uh, their, their past history. But sir, being in all seriousness, I don't know that we've ever had a project come in front of us where a developer has went to the extent that this one has done. Uh, they're talking about things as far as putting uh, solar panels in their building. There are not many solar panels around Prince George, I, I might say. There's the odd one at of individual cabins, but certainly not uh, around most of our homes. And here we got an apartment block that's talking about doing some of that to conserve energy and to recognize the community behind them so that the, you can't peer into the barbecues uh, on the decks of individuals. So I think those are good things that they've done. As far as the OCP document, it is a living, breathing document and it needs changes and it has had changes and then we redo it again and then we still have to make amendments to it. So I don't see a big issue with that. Uh, the traffic study, um, I believe that most folks will take alternative transportation or they'll ride together. And Councillor Sampson raised a good question about people spinning donuts at the end of, of uh, a speak on Davis. Maybe we as, as uh, a city council can put some signs there that say, don't do that. That's illegal to make a U-turn here, the same as we do in other parts of our city. We'll never be able to prevent all of the what ifs, but people's safety is an important what if in my mind to try and cover off. And I think the access out of this is a concern, but it's not enough of a concern at this particular point to say stop the process. So I'll be supporting it, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sampson, followed by Kroos. Thanks, Your Worship, for letting me back in, and I uh, appreciate my colleagues' comments. Uh, sitting here thinking uh, uh, about the application as well and my concerns with the um, traffic uh, in and out, um, I, I come back to the fact that I uh, perhaps my concern isn't related to the land use, and uh, it's a separate issue that we can maybe address uh, with the applicant uh, in a, at a separate junction. And uh, I, believe it was, I believe it was Mr. Osborne, I think was the name, but uh, our presenter today uh, was very receptive to hearing about uh, the concern. And uh, so I appreciate that they're going to go away and look at this and see if there's a way to do something different. If not, then I know they're going to do their due diligence as they have with the rest of the application. Because as I said, uh, they, they've come at this uh, wanting to be good neighbors. Uh, this whole entire application has been extremely well done. So uh, to Dr. Parmar and uh, her partners, uh, Mr. Price and so on, I do appreciate the work you've done on this application. It's been very impressive to see. Uh, and, and for all the reasons I listed earlier, uh, my comment was going to be exactly as uh, Councillor Everett's coming back into the conversation was perhaps we can look at that as a city and see what kind of signage we can put up to discourage U-turns down at Davis, top of Uspica by Tyner, and just uh, do some active uh, or proactive work to discourage those types of uh, issues, but they're not related to the land use and, and we can get there at a different time. So land use alone, this is an exciting project. This is going to be really big for our community, really big for the university and college, and I think it's gonna be a great home for a lot of students, so I'm gonna be supporting it. Uh, but I do uh, appreciate the opportunity to share my concerns, even if they're slightly off the, uh, uh, the land use piece, but um, uh, I appreciate the applicant uh, hearing them and uh, look forward to seeing if there's any opportunity to address them. Great, uh, and I, I know they'll do their due diligence. So thanks, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Cross. Thank you, Worship, and I'll be supportive as well. Uh, it's, it's all been said, but I'd like to repeat, I think it's a great infill project. Uh, I tr too trust the traffic uh, study uh, and um, uh, increased use of the of transit and increased active tr uh, transportation in terms of the walkway that's been provided uh, to the university. Uh, I would like to say though that I think I heard violins playing when Councillor Ramsey or Councillor uh, um, <laughs> Frizzell uh, was speaking about his four and a half mile walk. But anyway, um, I just want to say I will be supporting this and I look forward to it. Being Thank you very forward. much. Thank you. Uh, before I go to the two recommendations, I, I want to point out that I've got you all beat uh, for the years that I participated in uh, university. Uh, and I'm reminded quite often, and probably more often than I should be reminded, given I've been around this table for a while, that we are dealing specifically with land use. 
and I was heartened by the presentation tonight when the applicant spoke after I questioned the geotech review, forest fire reclamation work, uh, the buffer. Uh, so thank you for that to the applicant, if he's still on the phone. Uh, I still have concerns about egress uh, uh, in and out of there. I, I just, uh, that's the way it is. Uh, I, I think, though, that if the developer is prepared to take a look at something uh, that will access on the Tyner, I can live with that. Uh, and when I talk about transit, there are key locations that are a ways away from the, from the uh, project. Uh, but I think from a transit perspective, uh, we have a, a committee that reviews our transit and our transportation access and corridors. So. I have complete faith in that particular group of individuals to take a look at transit if, in fact, it becomes an issue down the road. Once that facility is built out, uh, they'll take a look at that. So uh, I'll be supporting this. And uh, with that, Council, uh, we have uh, two recommendations. Uh, first recommendation is that Council gives third reading to the City of Prince George Official Community Plan Bylaw Number 8383-2011, Amendment Bylaw Number 9156-2020. Thank you. Seconder, please. Seconder, Councillor Ebert. All those in favor in the room, opposed in the room, opposed on Zoom. Opposed. Councillor Skaken is opposed, that carries eight to one. Uh, the second recommendation is that council gives third reading to City of Prince George zoning bylaw number 7850-2007, amendment bylaw number 9157-2020, a mover and a seconder please. Thank you, Councillor Sampson, Councillor Kraus. All those in favor in the room, opposed in the room, opposed on Zoom. Opposed. Councillor Skaken is opposed. That carries eight to one. Thank you very much, Council, and uh, thank you very much, Ms. Connolly, and to uh, Melissa for her work. And if the applicant is still on, thank you very much for your participation tonight.